Hey folks, the time has finally come. I'm going to be stripping down this FS, the full suspension Stanton, um, ready for a new frame. Now, there's a few things I want to do in this video. One is to basically talk through all the components and what we've gone through and what we've had to change and what has been good and how things have held up. The other one is how to strip the bike down ready for a new frame the easiest way so I'm not taking every little bit off I'm taking it off so it's the easiest way to put it back onto another frame so let's get started and let's take this thing to bits right so basically the first thing I want to do get the wheels off because they're nice and easy uh, I could leave the front wheel in the forks if I wanted but it's so fast to take it off I might as well so if we start at the back this back wheel um, in the I think I've had this bike now sort of 10 months, something like that, and it's been through so much stuff, as you can see now. Whoa! Oh my God! Whoa! Yeah! Oh! All the way down. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, Rodney! So running the MV, he's got the 35 mil wide M7s with the rim strip on them. And their performance has been impeccable. I broke, I broke a spoke. Um, and actually I've replaced a few spokes on it that snap, but it was always the same one. And what I didn't realize is that when you snap a spoke, you have to undo all the spokes loosen it off, put the spoke in then re -true it and since I've had that done I've had no problems. So that's the back off, we don't need the rotor off, uh, the Shimano rotors have been perfect and the 1142 XT 11 speed, that's uh, the second one I've put on it and that was the original went on my bike, the orange before it, so that it did so long, it did well over a year and the Chris King hubs you have to occasionally tighten up this little clamp here um, it's like a bearing cone adjuster now and then if you feel a bit of wobble in the wheel you just tighten that up and yeah so that's the back end it's got the cush core in it which you'll have seen the the latest video uh, I've yet to test that out properly now on to the front I like sort of on these uh, O-Lens these are the M2 coil these have done probably six months something like that absolutely hammered in um, Spain done loads of wet rides and just been fantastic they are a long fork there's one thing to remember this is a 165 mil travel but because they're so long here and up here in the crown they're actually 25 mil longer from axle to head tube than a 160 mil travel Fox or um, or rock shocks so that will slacken out your head angle by maybe another degree, something like that, which to me isn't a bad thing. So yeah, these things have performed ace. So I haven't had them serviced. Uh, maybe look at servicing them later on in the year when things kick off again, hopefully. So the same with the front really. I've had no bother with the front wheel. I've got the big 200 or 203 rotor on this. And the same again, the Chris King hub, never had to tighten that one up. I just fitted the cush core to this and we've got the WTB tyres. This is the Verdict 2.5. If we manage to get out in some summer, I will be replacing that with a Vigilante and I'm still going to go 2.5 front and 2.4 rear. This is the light fast, the light high grip and on the back is the tough fast rolling. Put your axle back in so you don't lose it. There's a tip. Alright, so now I'm going to take the entire front end off so that all I have to do when I rebuild is put the whole front end onto the new bike. So the simplest way to do this, you need to think about it, is I'm going to undo the rear brake hose here and uh, the dropper I'm going to undo here where at the end of the cable so we've got no cables holding that on. The front can all stay together, uh, so we need to start by doing these cables. 
obviously these will need bleeding through again once we're up and running with the new frame so just undo that and just to mention the XT brakes um, the four pops absolutely fantastic I've had to bleed them probably twice the whole time I've had it just to get a little bit of air out where the levers will go in a little bit PNW dropper post it's been really good that's a 200 mil and it's got the PNW lever here the lever's good we'll take this off now and just have a look how that bearing feels so the cables off there and it still feels pretty good it's slightly notchy but certainly wouldn't be replacing that bearing at this stage I mean a teeny bit notchy but I mean there's a decent big bearing in these things so happy with that so that is oh obviously we've got to do rear shifter uh, on the new one because the the new frame is going to be 30 mil longer uh, it may be let me see 30 mils like that long so if that's connected there should just about get away with it but I have emailed Shimano to get a new hose kit to maybe put a longer one on now the shifter forgot about that one the rear shifter the XTR this has done quite a few years I think it's like a 28 2017 2018 rear rear XTR down here you'll see there's a bit of grease on there that's because it did recently start to um, kind of jam you know where the clutch sends them back again and you can tighten the clutch in there so I uh, literally the other day I took that cover off and greased cleaned it up greased it up seems to have fixed it so if it does do that thing where your chain goes slack and won't go back that's what you need to do you don't need to chuck the mech away you can fix it so if that cable's coming off the inner cable will be changed let's do this the easy way there you go Also, just to say, uh, I use all Shimano except for the little cable ends, which are Fibrax. These are made in Wrexham, and uh, yeah, because they're metal, they're just their longevity is loads better. And when you're doing this, all your little bits and bobs, like you know this bit for your your cable um, to get to your cable in the rear shifter. This is the I think this is an XT shifter. Just put them back together and then you won't lose them. So I think the front is ready to come off. Got here the new Unite components bar and stem. The stem is absolutely lovely. When you're doing this you have to watch that the forks don't just suddenly drop out as well. The um, the clamping sort of pressure of the Chris King at the top though is pretty good and should hold on to it. If you the bars off, but you have to remember these are, I mean, you can undo them from the forks. I just leave them connected on because, you know, it's just one less thing to undo and do back up again. The same down here. Mug guard that can stay on the RRP bolt on that has been absolutely fantastic. Loving that. So get all your spacers off, and they can go back on. And you've got all this lot off. All right, so we're off with that one. On there for now, and then get your bits and pieces here. Chuck them all back on. Obviously, when it's all built back up, this all these all will be greased up and sorted out. Stem back on, and then stem cap back on, and nothing can come off then. All right, so that's our front end. That's done. Out the way. Put it over here. Just need to get this headset off now. Take these little bits off. And bearings are in there. I don't feel that feels a little bit ropey, but not bad enough to need the bearing replacing. What I'll do is I'll um, I'll probably strip the seal off that and put some clean it out and put some grease in it if I can. Let's get this headset off. Oh, 
There we go, she's about to go. It's going to ping off because I haven't got three hands. Unless the camera person will grab hold of it. There we go. Now the same with the bottom one. There we go. So another little tip for you here. Just so you don't lose bits and pieces. Just put it together. Your headset. This is if you've got to store it for a bit like me. And then just bang a cable tie through it. There you go. You're not going to lose anything. Next up. And this is where external cables are an absolute godsend. And that is undoing the cables from the frame. Set from the dropper. Which does go internally. Everything else is a doddle. So we just snip them off. So that's the front pretty much done. Um, time to move on to the back. So I think the dropper can be the next thing. So this dropper, the PNW from America, they sent it us 200 mil because this frame is a, it's a small standover, 15 or 15 and a half inch. Um, so I needed super long dropper to take advantage of it. The new frame is going to be, uh, yeah, this is a 15. The new one's going to be 16 and a half. So it will sort of be around about there. So I'm still going to have the benefits of this nice long dropper. The dropper's been good, been really good. It's still nice action. I have found though when I first had it, it slowed right up and I had to strip it and um, re-grease it. But it was such, I mean, you can literally do it in 10 minutes. And as long as you keep this thing clean and lubed up, I use the Fenwick suspension lube, it won't let you down. And as for, if you come and have a close look, as for play after 10 months, you see there's like none. So pretty impressive really for a 250 quid post. All right then, how easy is this gonna come out? There we go, so that's it. It's a bit mucky at the bottom, but there's a lot of grease. I put quite a lot of grease on there just so that it didn't get too crappy and start like drying up, and not working. And it's still, you see, still working fine. Uh, that's been good. The DMR Oi Oi saddle took a little bit of getting used to because it's harder than the usual saddles, but really like it now. Always worth before you swap over, especially if it's going to be to a similar length frame is just to keep keep that cable on there for when you swap over and then you can match it up to a new cable for length and you're not it takes a sort of guesswork and faffing about out of it right and all the hardware as well obviously is going to be transferred so like the seat collar the linkage uh the rear rear dropouts etc right so next on we're going to move to the back end of the frame and uh, start taking bits off there So rear mech, get these cables out of here, there we go, now I'll be um, putting these dropouts onto the new one, so instead of taking the mech off there, I'm going to take it off there, but first undo the chain. If you're wondering why this bike doesn't look as clean as it normally does, because I did the test ride for... Uh, well just to get the fluid around the cush cores like two days ago and it didn't get that dirty so I didn't bother cleaning it really let's find my split link so chain wise always use Shimano always have um, I think uh, these are the best chains. I know we are sponsored by Shimano, but I have used other chains before and these just outlast everything. Like I say, the XTR rear Mac, this has done loads of bikes and it's still going pretty well. I fixed the clutch. Again, bolts back in and you ain't gonna lose them. Big sturdy tough dropouts in these Stantons, you're never going to bend and knacker these. 
which is ace same with that outer cable you've got the length there maybe you know because it's longer add 30 mil when you put a new one in so drop out on the other side there's the other one now the brake take the whole thing off these are side mounts so take the actual bolts out of the adapter rather than taking the uh, caliper off the adapter again this brake has been absolutely spot on so powerful just brilliant bolts back in how many of you out there use your mouth as much as me carrying holding tools and holding little bits and bobs always do it to the fact when I've been to the dentist for checkups he's actually told me off saying he, that he actually notices that I've hold, held things in my teeth because they're flat years of doing it so that's the caliper off now the chain tamer this chain tamer has done uh, probably about eight months it's actually um, you see it's just started literally broke on me on the last ride I mean it's only a 20 quid bit and if you had one of these and it did that where it's broken they would replace that but what it has done is it, it I mean it's a quiet bike anyway but it really quietens it down unfortunately I didn't have it for two months and if you look on this side from the inside you'll see where the chain has hit this hit the chain stay because I didn't have any chain stay protection on if I'd have in hindsight I'd have put chain stay protection on especially here on the outside where you can see there's a little bit of wear on the aluminium chain guide again this is Unite components and impeccable these things just last forever and never really seem to wear out that's your spacers I'm spacing it out and after 10 months of use Look at it, I mean, these are clean, but amazing. Fantastic. Now onto the cranks. Uh, these are XT, and these are, I think these have done about six months and just no problems at all with them, really. Still running sweet as on the um, Chris King bottom bracket. Got the Unite flat pedals, been using the flat pedals a fair bit over the winter really enjoying them and the Unite if you look from this side you've got the Unite purple thick thin chain ring too bad needs a bit of a clean up every all these parts are gonna you know now before I get the frame I'll give everything a decent clean up get a disc cleaner on stuff a rotor cleaner spray Fenwick stuff and then um, yeah lube everything up ready just the BB now there you go so right is left hand thread left is right hand thread and how does it feel still feels that's the thing with the Chris King you know that's that's like 10 months old and that bearing still feels like new fantastic right so the final thing oh it's two more things yeah get this bottle mount off with having a XL length frame with a slightly higher top tube I'm hoping that this uh, bottle adapter for the fid lock will then be able to there'll be room for it up here there wasn't enough room on this frame I don't know how strong the uh, magnets are on these there you go <laughs> so finally it's just the uh, Olin shock and like the forks this thing has been incredible um, it just works it just does what it says it's like uh, seriously supple when you put it in the firmer mode here it's, uh, it's you know you can go uphill in it and you can spend all day on the steadier trails with it just infirm put 
that bolt in because these linkages are coming off. So speaking to Dan Stanton about this, I had to talk to him about it just to get some info first. Um, what he uses is the best bearings which are called SKF and he has these things called uh, rotary covers which are meant to be the best covers to keep all the crap out and all the bearings on these are actually in the linkages and they're not in the frame so it makes for really easy changing and swapping over so this is the big test I haven't done this since I've had this frame new and it is to run the suspension up and down and feel whether it's grindy or gritty that is still after 10 months of abuse smooth as silk really impressive so if you come and have a close-up look you can see kind of how the wear has got on over the 10 months this thing is fully invisi framed and you can just see where this invisi frame has done its job it has protected all this beautiful paint so well there's a few rub marks here and there and on hindsight the white was a crap color choice because it's so I mean this needs a clean but um, it is harder to keep clean than most colors and you see the odd bit of rubbing like here um, but yeah it's held up it's held up really well to be honest so normally if you're doing a frame swap that's it you've done all the stuff now you get your frame in and you basically reverse it and we'll be doing a vlog on building it back up but with this because you know I'm dealing direct with the manufacturer and there's no point spending them spending extra money I'm going to keep the linkage hardware so this linkage that linkage not sure about the shock mount but I'll take that off anyway and uh, if it comes without one then we've got one here so I'll get that off first this is where the snap-on tools come into play that's that bit off so the final thing to come off is the rear linkage um, and let's get this back end off now So there you can go, you can see the bearing in there. Um, and I think, although it feels all right, I will change those. Might as well, because you know, if you can get them before you put it back together, then put some new ones in. Again, bolts back in so you know where things go. how they come apart like that one more bolt and she's completely stripped and that's it so I will uh, this will be probably boxed up and sent back to Stanton and Stanton or next week if you depending on when you're watching this um, sending me out the new one and I'll reverse the process, put new bearings in these linkages, put all that stuff up that will be all nicely clean and lubed back on and I'll film that as well. Hopefully you like this vlog, hopefully you found it interesting. Uh, I, you know, I don't class myself as a bike mechanic so don't slam us too much if I got things wrong, you know, I'm just doing it my own way. Thank you very much for watching. If you check out the links in the description you'll see some of the products that we use and you can get discounted rates on. And also my website for any merchandise that's still going on, even through all this virus pandemic. Um, I'll see you soon. Cheers for watching. Keep it pinned.